We know how hard uh, St John Ambulance work out there, and I guess we never really see the emotional toll that it takes on them. Uh, they're out there when we need them most, but are we there when they need us? And we've seen over the last year or so uh, some pretty bad headlines out of the St John Ambulance service with four of their paramedics committing suicide. My next guest could have been another. He, uh, Chris Mawson, he worked uh, at the very coalface of the St John Ambulance Service. He was involved in all kinds of uh, really disturbing things. And uh, it finally became too much for him. He called us earlier this year, and we did an interview, you may recall, with Chris, and talking about the way that St John Ambulance was dealing with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder for their members. And obviously we've seen since the uh, chief psychiatrist in Western Australia, they've now come and done a, a, um, a, a review of what's going on at St John and change is on the way. Uh, but Chris Mawson is still left with his recovery out of his experiences on the road. And to address this... He's actually written a book, it's self-published, and it really goes into extraordinary detail about um, what happens on the road and how people debrief about this. I should warn people that uh, if you're in the, in the car with the kids or something, there are some confronting things in this story. You might want to, don't turn the radio off, maybe put the kids out of the car or something, but uh, you know, just, just a warning on that one. So anyway, Chris Mawson joins me now. Good afternoon, Chris. Hi Adam, thanks for having me back. Yeah, mate, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, I know I know how hard it is to write a book. I've written six of them. <laughs> it's no easy yeah. task whatsoever. You've written this book, Broken, which dis- which really I guess sums up the whole issue. Uh, people who go into the St John Ambulance Service or any paramedic service, they are strong people, but they do have their breaking points. What was yours? Um, well, as I previously said to you, you know, in an interview I did with you some months back. Um, it was just a, a catalogue of jobs that I'd had, which were personally traumatic to me. Um, it affected me um, in a horrendous way. And um, I think really the final job was um, an old lady that uh, reminded me of my grandmother. You know, I could just relate so much to the job and she just bled out in front of me. And um, she was literally dying um, you know, she was bleeding to death. And that was the very last job I had in October of 2013 that just finished me. Um, at that I, I moment, Chris, she took your hand and smiled at you and yeah. to thank you. It must have been an extraordinary uh, moment for yeah. you because you couldn't save her and yet there was this peace there. But the aftermath for you was nothing like peace. Not at all. No, that, that's quite right in what you're saying. Um, she, her family actually were actually there at the hospital and um, they called me in and they just said, Mum wants to say goodbye and thank you. And um, she knew she was dying. And I just remember holding her hand and her looking up at me and it, it was just a, an awful, awful vision that sticks in my mind. Uh, and I stuck in my mind for months. And um, I just knew... You know, she was thankful for what I'd done for her. And, uh, you know, our family called me a hero. But, you know, that word today still, it's, it's humbling to hear that. But I'm not a hero. You know, I was getting paid to do a job. And, I understand. And I think know. the thing is, from reading your book, which is terrific, by the way, and, and you know, uh, I think it should be published by a mainstream publisher, and, I'm, and I might even make some calls to see if that can happen after this, because I think it's really a, a, a truth we need to hear. Um, you focused in on so many of the people you couldn't save, yet yeah. there are probably hundreds, if not thousands, over your career, which began in Manchester in England, and then you, you came out uh, here in Western Australia, stretching into possibly thousands of people you've saved or helped. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, you know, when you become a paramedic, when you join the job, well, well certainly when I joined it back in Manchester, um, you know, in early 2000, it was like, you know, you don't know, you're not trained to deal with um, what, we, what we see, what we're com- confronted with every day. Um, that, that's just not part of your training. You know, you, you're trained to, um, it's all artificial when you go to school, um, and it doesn't always go to plan out on the street. And yeah, I, I, you know, I've, there's lives I've, I, I wish I could have saved. You know, the cot death. I wish, say in the book, I just wish I could have cradled the baby back to life. Um, you know, the, the drownings and the hangings, and you know, it, it, it soon, soon takes it, takes its toll. And I just think there should be more awareness within training school. I know St John are working towards that. 
But people need to be aware before they start to do this job or any emergency and any emergency service job, including police or fire, is that you know there is a toll. It, well, it sure, will take a toll on you. Yeah, because yeah. you've you've talked to the culture in, and I'm not going to single out St John Ambulance. I think this is common to all ambulance services. You're dealing with so many difficult matters, particularly mm-hmm. with this drug epidemic we're seeing on the streets as well, with methamphetamine and, 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 and other drugs as well, yeah. um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that that people do need help. And, and the, but sometimes there's an attitude of saying, well, be tough, carry on, suck it in, princess, you know? Um, and I think that's that's certainly begun to change at St John Ambulance, certainly, but, it, but in your period of time, you felt constrained about talking about your issue. Absolutely, and um, a lot of paramedics will agree with me. There is a passive-aggressive culture, and a borderline bullying culture with in any emergency service. Um, but obviously, as a paramedic, I was witness to it. You know, uh, I've seen people, you know, that I've worked with, and, and I'm not talking about you know cl- close colleagues, but people that I've worked with just maybe doing one shift, and you get a bad job, and it's, it's the suck it up attitude. You know, it's soft to talk about. Um, a bad job, you just get on with it, you pick yourself up, brush yourself off, and, and you just got to get on with it. But what people fail to remember is that, you know, we wear a suit of armour when we go out every day, and every patient we treat, for every life we can't save, that armour is just chinked away and, and cracked away until there's nothing left. And, you know, it, it has a profound, profound psychological and mental effect on you long term. How do you think St John Ambulance has changed? I mean, uh, they, we had a bit of a stash with them earlier this year when we talked about this issue, and they, they really weren't they were in denial, I was saying at the time. But I think with another suicide after, uh, after that, and then we spoke, yeah. um, you know, there was just no way around this problem. Do you think that they've mm-hmm. started to grasp this nettle? I think they've started to come to the party now. I think um, with the independent inquiry that they've um, got going uh, or have had on recently, um, there's been a lot of push from the from the union as well to make a change. There's been a lot of pu- uh, push from paramedics, ambulance officers, um, you know, um, communication staff, volunteers. Um, I think St John are now aware that need, something needs to be done and something needs to be done quickly. It's not going to be a quick fix. What I am just hoping is that issues aren't just going to be brushed under the carpet. St John, you know, need to be pretty squeaky clean now and and they need to come to the party and make sure that all the paramedics are looked after all their ambulance staff you know right up to volunteers are looked after wa wide you know i'm not just talking in the perth metro area you know we're talking sort of the whole of wa Uh, and i just hope the the well-being team come good and and they can provide um, a service that they're you know professing to be able to provide sure you know, i just hope it i hope it's enough there's certainly um, so you're, you're a product of the earlier period where there wasn't enough yeah. attention to this uh no. your your story is very instructive i think for them as well i mean you've you yeah. went through the whole gamut uh, depression anger a couple of suicide attempts uh but you're now finding ways to deal with your post-traumatic stress disorder how have you done that yeah. Um, well, really, I've um, linked up with a, a charity now. Um, and like I said, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. It's a graphic book. Uh, it's certainly not nighttime reading, um, but it's been therapy for me. And uh, the other part of my therapy was h- hooking up with a, a charity called Sirens of Silence, who are doing an immense immense job. They're doing a fantastic thing. Um, and they're out there, really, to help um, emergency service workers, in, you know, paramedics, um, um, to, to not to fall through the cracks, to, to to come forward and say, look, they've got a problem, and and get in touch with them. Um, Lynn and Ian Sinclair are actually running this from Broome, um, and they've started with nothing, absolutely nothing. And all I would ask is for people to appeal to them and get in contact with them, uh, as I have, you know, because it's been m- more therapy than St John Ambulance could ever give me. Indeed. Uh, you know, yeah. they've offered me more than St John Cook. Okay. Well, I'm sure they're catching up yeah. now as well with their members. They know that's important as well. Um, listen, uh, as you say, you're not a hero, uh, Chris, no. but, I, but I think you're going to be the best man you can possibly be. That's all you can be. Uh, yeah, I just feel it's, uh, it was time to break ranks with the paramedics, for, for other paramedics and speak up. Um, it's time to do that. I've got nothing to lose anymore, and but I've still got good friends and colleagues that are out there 
they're on the coal face and I care about them and I love them dearly and um, you know I don't want anything to happen to them OK, well, thanks for your time, and it's, uh, it's a terrific achievement, the book, and uh, I will definitely recommend it. To... How do people find the book? It's currently, you self-published it. How are you selling it? Yeah, it's it been sold through the charity. Um, if um, they log on to um, www.soundsofsilence.org, or they can email uh, Lynn and Ian um, at soundsofsilence at westnet dot com. OK, and we, we have those details. So thank you so much for your time, Chris. I appreciate it. Thanks, Adam. Take care. Thank you so much. It's my absolute pleasure.